All right, so today we're going to get the last um, form of a linear equation that we talk about, and this is standard form. All right, so standard form uh, can be helpful sometimes when our x and y intercepts are really, really nice. Um, so that's really when we're going to use this, and we'll talk about how maybe you could use standard form to rewrite into slope intercept form, which you know. So standard form is um, ax plus b, y equals c, right? a, b, and c are going to be numbers, real numbers, and a and b cannot be zero. So when I go to graph these, I'm going to find the x-intercept and the y-intercept, right? So first I'm going to find the x-intercept, then the y-intercept. When I have those two, I'm going to plot those points and then solve, right? So my x-intercept, right, where I cross the x-axis is always going to be when y equals 0. So when I want to find the x-intercept, I just plug in 0 for x. So I have x minus 2 times 0 equals negative 2. And then, of course, anything times 0 is 0. So I, have, I end up with x is equal to negative 2. So there's my x-intercept. So I can go and I can make a point at x is negative 2. And I have my first point there. All right? And then my y-intercept, so where I cross the y-axis, is when x equals 0. And so I, I do the same kind of thing, right? I plug in 0 for x and say, well, 0 minus 2y equals negative 2. So negative 2y is negative 2. And I'm going to divide by negative 2 because I'm just solving for y. So y equals 1. Right? So I can make a point at y equals 1. And now I have my two points to graph. So that works out really well for that. Um, the other thing that you could do, right, if you wanted to, sometimes it's it makes a little more sense if you start getting weird um, intercepts, is I could say, well, if I have x minus 2y equals negative 2, right? I could solve for y. So what I could do is I could say, well, I'm going to subtract x from both sides. Negative 2y equals negative x minus 2. Divide by negative 2. So y is equal to um, 1 half x plus 1. And so if I were to look, right, I have my y-intercept at positive 1. I went up 1 over 2 to get my second point. So I could use slope-intercept form. I can solve for y um, to get that. So sometimes that might work out well. Um, it just kind of depends on the situation. Um, one thing I want to talk about, too, is horizontal and vertical lines. So we've talked a little bit about these and their slopes. Um, but now we're going to talk about, you know, kind of how do we graph these. Right, so what I would look at is say, well, x equals 2, right? So I know that this is where x equals 2. So now the question be becomes, right, vertical or horizontal line, um, you know, how do, I, how do I know where to go? So I'd look at it and say, well, if I go over here to the red dot, right, does x still equal 2 for it to be a horizontal line? Well, no, this is x equals 4, right? So what if I were to go up here, right? To the blue line, well, I look, right, the y value might be 4, but now x equals 4, right? x is still 4, or 2, sorry. x is still 2, so that's when I know I want to do kind of that vertical line. It's a terrible vertical line, sorry about that. Um, to get my, my answer there, my graph there, right? So the same thing happens with y's, right? y equals negative 1. I know that's there. So the question again becomes, if I go up here, if it were to be a vertical line, is that y equals negative 1? Well, no, right there, y equals 2. So if I look down here, right, if I go kind of over here, right, well, now x is something, but y is still equal to negative 1. So the y equals lines are going to be horizontal. Um, and the other thing we kind of look at sometimes is how to rewrite things 
um, in different forms, right? So we kind of talked on the front a little bit about how do we rewrite um, standard form into slope intercept form. Now we're gonna talk about how do we go kind of backwards. So if I look here, right, I want to um, get rid of the fractions. All right, so if there's any fractions, I want to get rid of those. And then I want to move um, variables to one side and all numbers to the other. So what does that look like? So if I look here at this first one, y equals negative 3 sevenths x plus 5. I'm going to look and say, well, how do I get rid of the fraction? Easiest thing to do because I have one fraction is to multiply by the denominator, right? So I'm going to multiply by 7. And then I always have to do the same thing to both sides. So that makes this left side really easy, right? It's 7y. When I look here, 7, I'm going to distribute that to both things inside. Whenever you multiply a fraction by the same number that's on the denominator, that fraction goes away. So I end up with just a negative 3x. And then I have a plus 35. And then I just want to get variables all on one side. So we've got variables all alone on the left side there. So I can move this over by saying plus 3x, plus 3x. And so then I can rewrite this as 3x plus 7y equals 35. Right, I can do the same thing over here. Now I have kind of a point slope form. So if I wanted to, to do this, I still want to get rid of my fraction, right? So but then my denominator is a 2. So I multiply everything by 2. So now what that does over here is it kind of reduces that fraction to 1, and I'm left with x plus 6. And here I have to distribute the 2, so I have 2y plus 2. So they look and I say, well, I have some, some variables over here, so I'm going to move those over here. 2y minus x plus 2 equals 6, and minus 2, minus 2, so 2y minus x equals 4. And there is my standard form.